Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kim and today is an introduction for Pango. For this video, I am partnering with somebody and the goal is to hit bingo on a palette or if you put singles together um, by hitting pan. So I asked Ruth Foley if she would join me and she graciously said yes. And um, this is the second time I'm filming this because I lost all my footage so I'm really upset upset about that. But anyhow, um, I decided to use the BH Naughty palette and she decided to use a palette of singles. And then what I did was I just decided I'm not going to count this bottom row. So like B-I-N-G-O, B-I-N-G-O. And the row that was randomly chosen was B-I-N across. So I am using this row right here and I will in, I'll put in footage of the swatches that I did for this so that you can see what the swatches are. Um, and for each of the videos, we decided that we were going to answer some questions. So this time it, they were Ruth's questions and um, I will get into more of that during the video. But anyway, I will put in my swatches and then I'll, you'll see a look that I am doing with this palette. So the goal, whoever hits pan in each of the shadows first wins pango. But we also have talked about what if we do like a usage? So I think what we're gonna do is play around for the first month and see how we do. And then um, maybe decide, you know, we wanna modify it to like a 20 use goal or something. So anyway, here you go. And um, yeah, so next you'll be seeing either the look or the swatches. Have a great day. Okay, so this is the palette that I'm using for Pango. And Ruth and I are doing this project together and we chose N across for our row. So let me reveal to you guys what that is. So because you only needed a board of 25 by 25, I decided I'm using this palette, but I'm cutting off this bottom row. So that doesn't exist for this project. So B I N G O B I N G O. So B I N and across is this row with decked out nutcracker ornaments, Santa baby and sugar plum. So let me swatch them for you. First shade we have is decked out. Just this really beautiful shimmer. Oh my gosh. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Then we have Nutcracker. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. Ornaments. Oh my gosh, so pretty. So pretty. So far, I'm not mad at any of these. Not mad at them at all. But Nutcracker looks like it might stain. So we'll see. Then I have um, Santa Baby and Sugar Plum. This is gonna be really challenging for me to pan. First of all, I feel like I'm terrible at panning. And I have so many eyeshadows and projects right now, so Ruth is probably gonna beat the pants off me. Go easy on me, Ruth. Cause it's gonna take me a while to hit pan on these. So this is my color story. Decked out. Nutcracker, Ornaments, Santa Baby, and Sugar Plum. I love this color story. So wish me luck. And this is what I have to be panning. All right, guys, so I'm primed, I'm ready, and I'm gonna start in with the shade Santa Baby. I'm gonna put that as the transition shade all over my transition area. Um, so Ruth and I decided while we were doing this, we were going to um, answer some questions. We thought it like we were both talking one day and we were like, oh my gosh, we are such nosy people and we love to know about people. And I always tell my students, it's like one of the reasons why I read because you're able to be nosy without like asking questions, right? You can find out about different types of people or just imaginary people and it kind of satiates that nosiness. Don't you tell me you're not nosy. I know you all are nosy. 
And I was also talking to my students about one time when I'm like, you know when you take a walk at night and you go by people's houses and their windows are open and you can see inside their house and they're like, that's creepy. I'm like, oh, no, it's not. They have their curtains open and we're there in the middle of town. Like, it's not like I'm going up to their window and peering in it. Like, they were like appalled. Anywho, whatever. Do you guys do that or am I weird? Like, maybe I'm weird. Okay. And I don't know what is going on with my camera. I don't know why the color keeps going in and out and I promise I'll try to figure it out. But until then, we're just gonna have to deal with it. Then I'm gonna go in with um, Sugar Plum. I'm gonna put this all over the outer V. I really like that color. So anyway, back to the questions. Ruth and I, and again, I'm gonna do a seven because I learned that from Geek Out of Water. I like how it just picks up my eye, right? Um, see the difference? It just picks up the corner a little bit. Um, so we decided that we were, we wanted to ask questions and we were gonna send each other choices, but then Ruth sent me her, her idea for questions and I was like, oh yes, girl, I like these questions. So I didn't even come up with any. So maybe next time we'll have some of my questions in the mix. But the first question that we are going to answer is, what is the best thing about being in your 40s? And I didn't ever feel like, so let me give you my thoughts about age. First of all, I, I now am believing, so I guess this is one of the best things about being in my 40s. I hate that cliched term, age is just, you know, age is just a number, age is what you think it is. But I really feel that it truly is. Okay, I'm gonna put Nutcracker in my crease. So I really just feel like age is just a number at this point. I always thought that when you're in your 40s, this is like when I was in my 20s and stuff, I always thought when I was in my 40s, you know, you have your act together, you know everything, you have all the answers to all the world's problems, and you're so old that like it's ridiculous. I don't feel like that anymore. Um, I do feel, however, that I, I kind of have some things figured out. Like I know how I feel about like big topics in life. Now that I'm also married, divorced, no kids, I feel like I have some other answers to things about myself that I didn't know before. Um, obviously, like as you go through things in life, you learn more. But I don't feel really old and I don't feel like I have it all together. Like I, I just don't. I don't. I don't feel like that. Um, do I feel really young and like, no, I don't feel like that either, but, um, I'm going to go with decked out on my lid, but I do like the sense of maturity that I feel now. I feel like I can make decisions and actually know that they might be the right ones instead of second guessing myself. Um, I like that. Um, you know, people might come to me for advice on different life lessons, things like one of, one of the things my girlfriends tell me is, um, that, you know, I do have a lot of wisdom and I have some older girlfriends, like I have girlfriends that are in their fifties and sixties and, you know, they're like, you, you really have a good sense on, on things because you've gone through them and we haven't like, for example, out of one friend group that I have. Um, of three women, one is in their 50s, one is in their 60s, they've never lost a parent, and I've lost a parent. Um, we have some other similarities in common, but they didn't go through certain things until after I did, so I was able to um, lend a little bit of a different lens to them when they were going through things. So anyway, that's a roundabout way of saying I feel like you have a little bit more maturity and a little bit more life knowledge to like help people. Um, what is my favorite book genre to read? Well, and I'm gonna go in with ornaments there. Um, and I'm gonna use my finger, I'm gonna use my pinky. That is such a pretty pink, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm gonna go right in, I wanna go right in there, yep. And then I'm gonna put it in my inner corner. So I don't really have a favorite book genre. But I will tell you that there are certain shades, or sh shades, certain kinds of books that I don't like to read. Like I'm not a huge um, like fantasy book reader. It's just not my jam. Occasionally I will read one, like if my student's like, oh, just try it, or somebody's like, this is the best fantasy book I've ever read and they're a fantasy lover, then 
I'm like, all right, I'll try it. Oh, I kind of like that, like blending it into my crease. Um, so, Rosie, no thank you. She keeps licking. See, I still feel like I'm babysitting. She keeps licking my legs because I put lotion on. Um, I do like some science fiction. Okay, I really like this look. I like that look. Yay. All right. So as I'm talking, I'm just going to continue on with doing um, my eyeliner, my, yeah, my eyeliner, mascara, and lips. Sorry, guys. I'm off, I'm off frame. Um, so, yeah. So let's see. What I really like, though, are um, I like mysteries. And I like, I specifically like mysteries if they have a little bit of like romance to them. Um, I like the Women's Murder Club books that James Patterson writes. I like those a lot. I like those because they're, they're like quick reads for me. And I don't feel like, hold on, I get something else. And I feel like at the end of the day, if I'm reading, like especially after school, I don't really want to have to concentrate too hard. So I, um... Why can't I talk and do that at the same time? Um, I just want to be able, like, if I want to read for five minutes, I can read, like, three chapters of James Patterson because they go quick. Um, I really like um, Jodi Picoult. I like Lainey Moriarty. I like um, Eileen Hildebrand. I think that's how you say her name. I like um, beach reads. I like, you know, just, I just like fluffy reads. I also like books that are like a series where you learn about the town. Like Debbie May Comber wrote, oh, ow, ow, I just poked myself in the eye. Ow, 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 ow. Debbie May Comber wrote a series like The Cedar Cove and like every book had a different number. So like the first book had a one in it. The second book had a two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. I think it was called The Cedar Cove series. And I really, really enjoyed those. Um, and then I do like some classics. I'm not a huge classics girl. Everybody's always appa appalled when they're like, you haven't read this, like you haven't read that. And I'm like, no, I never was really into the classics. I more was into like young adult lit. I love reading things that the kids are. Um, so, you know, I, I wasn't a big classics, classics girl and I didn't go to school for English. I went to school for teaching. So when you don't go to school and you fo you don't focus on like the on English, you don't take as many courses. You take more like teaching stuff. So that was um, you know part of it too. I'm gonna go in with my Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara. This stuff is so good. I love it. Um, so yeah, so that is my answer to what is your favorite genre. It's hard when you're an English teacher to ask that question, but on the other hand, I feel like it's pretty easy because I can tell you the things I don't like. Um, this mascara is so good, guys. It is my lowest rated mini mascara. That's It's in a project for that prompt. Um, but holy crap, it is good. Of course, it was rated four stars, right? Look at the difference. Can you tell? Um, okay, and then the third question was, what is your first job ever? Oh my God. Well, I guess I should say my first job ever was babysitting. I babysat like growing up and I actually I babysat for these kids on the corner. This is so funny. Now, let me preface all of this with I laugh when I get nervous and I think poop jokes are funny. Okay. Much to my mother's dismay. Okay. So anybody tells a story about like poop or something, I giggle. Sorry. So anyway, um, I was babysitting and this little boy was in the bathroom for like ever and I couldn't figure out what was going on and finally I'm like Michael what is going on Michael you gotta come out of the bathroom Michael what is going on and he's like I'm not coming out and I'm like you have to come out what is going on well it turns out he overflowed the toilet so I go I open the door and there's like you know like probably like you know one or two inches of water on the floor not the whole cup floor was covered but most of it was covered and thank god it wasn't a carpet which uh, we had carpet in our bathrooms growing up. My mother hated it, but that's what we had to have. Um, and that would have been a nightmare. But anyway, he overflowed the toilet. And there were little turds floating around. I'm gonna do my lips. I'm gonna do this um, unique li lip liner in Primal. It's a wicked bright red. Just, just wait though, don't freak out. Um, 
so I call mom and she was a nurse. So she was at the hospital working and I'm like, hi, um, Michael overflowed the toilet and I'm like giggling. Okay. Mind you, I'm like 12, probably 13, something like that. And I'm like, I know it's not funny, but I'm just nervous. I don't know what to do. How do you want me to clean it? And what she told me now appalls me as an adult, but I did it as a child. She goes, just go in the closet, take out all the towels that are in there, mop it up and keep and just throw them in the tub. Didn't tell me to mop the floor afterward, nothing. I was like, okay. So we did that and that was that. Another babysitting job I had, this girl, the, the little girl, they were so bad. They gave me migraines like every time and I was always like, I need a raise. The little girl puked on me. I'm gonna use the Nude Sticks Gel Color Lip and Cheek Balm in Posh over that. Now, I don't know as an adult if I would get mad at the babysitter for this, but at the time I was like, I didn't know what to do. Again, I was like 12, 13 years old. And mind you, there were no cell phones, okay? We didn't like, have cell phones to call mom and be like, what do I do? So the little girl threw up on me, like projectile vomited everywhere. It was down my shirt, on my pants. So I just went in the mother's room and I looked for sweatpants and I put on her clothes. And when she came home that night, she was so mad at me. And she was like yelling at me about how disgusting it was that I went through her stuff. And um, they called me after that. But like, I was just like, what did you want me to do? Your daughter puked on me. That's how I remember anyway. Maybe it didn't happen that way. And then I'm gonna top it with Millie Gloss. This is my Ofra Millie Gloss. But I'm gonna put it on my fingers because I keep getting the wand all messed up. And now it's turning like a little pink, which is fine, but it's such a pretty iridescent shade. Um, so yeah. So that was my first job, I guess, ever. Babysitting. So yeah, so here's my finished look. Um Thanks, Ruth, for doing this with me. It was really fun, and I hope I don't lose this footage because I will be really upset. And um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because we're going to be doing this every month. And um, if you um, like me, please consider subscribing. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are, and I will talk with you soon. Bye.